Hi, uh, in this video we'll take a look at the creation of this assembly. So the assembly consists of multiple parts and at the end of it we're going to be asked to actually put in a new coordinate system. We'll find out that the origin of the assembly is about here. We're going to put in a new coordinate system and we'll be referencing the center of mass from this coordinate system 1. First thing we'll do is we're going to put in some angles to control the position of the bucket arm. And then the second case will actually indicate some distances for the two cylinder pistons that we have. All right, so let's go back and take a look at what we're going to do. We have to put some base parts together and then we have some cylinders and pistons. And what we're going to introduce in this video is the um, width mate that is one of the advanced mates that allows us to position things exactly in the middle of other parts. So when we put these two pieces together, we're going to want this piston to be right in between the two of them. All right, well, let's get started. I'm going to move this over here, assume that you guys have it open, and I'm going to create myself a new assembly. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this base arm one and I am going to just drop it in its position as shown and we'll note where the origin is so the origin of this part and the origin of the assembly are shown here now before we go any further I want to put in this new coordinate system that we're going to need. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go up here under the assembly tab and select reference geometry. And one of the reference geometry options is to put in a coordinate system. Now the first selection is it's looking for a vertex. It's also possible to change the orientation of the new coordinate system with respect to the default coordinate system of the assembly. But we don't need to do that in this case. The way I'm pointing out this is the Z direction here, which is along this axis, is already in the correct direction, as is the X and Y axis. So all we need to do is simply select this vertex, and our coordinate system will automatically align, and we'll just say OK, and there's our coordinate system. Now you'll note that it disappeared again. So we can turn on the visibility of coordinate systems by going up and selecting the visibility of the coordinate systems to be turned on. So when we go back here, we'll see that our coordinate system is available to us. Okay, with this first part, let's go in and insert components. We'll select base arm two, and we're gonna position this with two coincident mates and one concentric mate. So we can open up the mate tool, and I'll select that face and this face make those coincident. And then I'll just drag this over here so I can grab this face, rotate, and grab this face. Makes those coincident. And of course, we talked about degrees of freedom, so now there's only a single degree of freedom left. And we'll lock that down by selecting two of the cylinders that are supposed to be pinned together. Okay. So we look down here on the bottom, we're fully defined. If we pull up the diagram now, we see that the next thing we need to do is put in this piston and that'll be connected to a cylinder and then we're gonna do the arm. So the first thing we need to do is have this piston that is going to be exactly in between these two plates. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll go for insert component. We'll bring in a piston. And we would like to locate the piston in the center of the gap between these two plates. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use an advanced mate. So we'll minimize the standard mates, open up advanced mates, and we want the width mate. So we begin by selecting two faces that define the width parameter. The second step is to select two faces that define the tab which is going to be then centered in the gap defined by the width. So very, very helpful um, tool. Now I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna select this and this to make them concentric and nothing's gonna happen. 
Nothing happens automatically because I don't have the standard mates visible. So minimize the advanced mates, expand the standard mates, and then select concentric. We will then dismiss the mate tool, go to insert components, and bring in the cylinder. And you'll note that the cylinder is upside down, so I can use the Z rotator to put myself into a better position. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just put these two together with a concentric mate. So I'll open up the mate tool, select this cylinder and this cylinder, and that's all we need for that tool. The next step is to dismiss the mate tool, open up insert component, and then select the lifting arm. And even though it's made so that it's exactly fits in between, let's again utilize the width mate. So again, minimizing standard mates, open up the advanced mates, select the width mate. And in this case, I can select this face and this face. You'll know that it jumps right down and this is the tab that's gonna go in the center of it. And it puts it where we want it. And then I can select here and here to make them concentric. Again, it didn't go automatically because I hadn't the standard mates open. So I'll select, select concentric and we're good to go. All right, so that will put this cylinder exactly in the middle of where we need this. And so what I'm going to do is I know I need a 140 degree angle between these two. So I might as well put it in now. So I'm going to select the angle tool, put in 140, and I'll go ahead and I'll select this face and this face. Well, the only thing I need to do to lock this thing together is to select this cylinder and one of these cylinders, and it'll automatically lock itself together. All right, so there is supposed to be a pin that goes in here, so we can go ahead and drag that. So we'll insert the pin. And I introduced this, or I may have not introduced this in your section, but there is an advanced mate that we can use because we know we need to do a concentric mate and a coincident mate. So if I felt like it, I don't use it all that often, but there is this mate, a mechanical mate referred to as a hinge mate. So what I do here is I select the hinge. What are my concentric selections? So this piece and this piece. And then it says, what are my coincident sections? So I'll select this piece and that piece, and it automatically moves them in. But you'll note there's not an option to lock the rotation of the pin. So that's why it's called a hinge. It automatically assumes that you're going to have some type of rotational motion. All right, so the next thing we're going to bring in is another piston cylinder. So what I'll do in this case, I normally just bring parts in one at a time, but I can select the cylinder and I can hold down control key and select the piston. And I have the ability to drop them both. As we have used previously, the piston can be placed using the width mate. This time I'll remember to reduce the advanced mates and open up the standard mates. I'll select this cylinder and this cylinder, and that puts them together. Okay, so now we have, of course, we have a degree of freedom here. So we'll say OK there. OK, so the next thing we'll do is we'll bring in the bucket and the two last pins that we need to complete the assembly. With these parts placed, we can then open up the mate tool and we can go ahead with the short So we can now put the bucket where it's supposed to go. And again, I can use the width mate. So minimizing standard mates, opening up advanced mates, selecting the width mate. Okay, and then I can minimize the advanced mates, open up the standard mates, and I can select um, this cylinder here and this cylinder here to make them concentric. 
The next step is to add a concentric mate between the cylinder and the bucket. Okay, so that fixes up the entire assembly. And if we were to look at it now, we could come in here and click somewhere on the bucket and we can rotate that portion of the bucket. Because we have the angle in here, we can't move that, except that I can by going into the mates here and finding out where I put that angle mate. Here it is. I can left click. I can suppress it. So now I can move the arm up and down and you'll see that the bucket is rotating at the exact same time. Or I can just simply rotate the bucket if I want to. That, that'll move everything. So let's go ahead. We'll come back in here and we will turn that, this angle mate back on. We'll unsuppress it. And now we see that we can rotate the bucket. If we go to our diagram, we'll find out that we need to put the angle here as being 50 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. We go to our mate tool, go to standard mates. Here I'll select the angle tool. I'll set it to be 50 degrees and I will select this surface and this upper surface. And then it makes those at 50 degrees. If we go to the PDF, we'll see that it gives us the center of mass with respect to the new coordinate system as giving the three values, but you'll also note that the center of mass is in meters. You might have noted that when I created this assembly, I never changed the default units from inch pound second. So let's go ahead and do that. So from inch pound second to the MKS system, and we'll go to our mass properties. And we find out that the center of mass is incorrect because we're reporting the coordinate values relative to the default coordinate system, which is the origin of the assembly. So I go from my pull down menu, I select coordinate system one, and I get my center of mass as negative 1.3, 2.07, and 0 0.26. Now, if we compare these to the actual values on the PDF, you'll note that the X value is off by a little bit. Well, that's because when I did this diagram originally, I would have had four decimal places showing. So let me show how to do that. Options. Instead of using document settings, we're going to use custom settings. So here's my MKS system. But instead of two decimal places, let's show four decimal places. And now you'll see where the one... Two nine comes from. So when I made the original PDF, I must have just rounded to the two decimal places without rounding up over here. So the these are, if you want to check your values, these would be the exact values into four decimal places. All right, so now the next thing we want to do is come down here and we will suppress the two angles and we're going to control the distances that the piston and cylinder are moving. So 0 0.35 and 0 0.85. But how do we go ahead and do that? Well, let's go ahead and we'll suppress these angles. So my mate, if your mates are not open, come over here, open up your mates, select angle one. We'll suppress that and scroll down to where you put your next angle in and we'll suppress that. Now, how do we go ahead and put in our faces? Well, there's a couple different ways of doing it. I could come in here, select this cylinder, and there's an option to change its transparency. So I could do that, and then I can see the inside of it. And I can do the same thing up here. I can select this and change its transparency. So let's go back to the diagram and see where those measurements are being made from. So they're being made from the bottom of the cylinder to the top of the piston. So let's go in here and see if we can grab this face over here. So there's a special way of doing this. So we'll go to our um, assembly mate. And now we're gonna go to do a distance tool and the distance here is going to be 0 0.85. And let's see if we can grab this face. 
It allows us to grab that face. And let's make sure that it lets us grab this face here. Now, you see that there's an issue going on here. So if you right click and you have the option of select other, and it brings up a box now, and it you have to scroll down to you find the face that you're interested in. And that's the one that we're interested in. So when you hover over your mouse and you select this, you get all the faces that are visible underneath the cursor. So I select here and it'll adjust the value to 0 0.85. All right, you may or may not like that process. All right, so let me show you the other way of doing it. In this case, I'm actually, let me change the transparency back for that one. And there is this tool referred to as the section view. All right, so if I view this maybe directly here, and I say I want to use a section view, you see what happens. That let me, Then I'll rotate myself. So you can see that I can bring the section back and forth. I can do different sections. I can do from bottom to top. And I can do, in this case, from front to back. So for positioning our cylinder, we want this. And if I drag it back, I can see, in this case, I'll see the two faces of the cylinder that I want. So I'll say, OK. Now I can go into my mate tool. I can go to my distance mate. And this is supposed to be 0 0.35. So I'll say 0 0.35, and I'll select this face. You see that I can come in here and easily select that face now, and I can do the exact same thing here. And I'll say OK, and we can go ahead and view it from this face. And I can actually then turn off the section view if I want. Just close the section view now. And we can, well, we're backwards, but let's go for the center of mass. So negative 1.92, we want to remember that. We'll go to evaluate mass properties. It, it we're with respect to coordinate system one. So x equals negative 1.92. All right, so I've packed a lot into this video. I hope you've all learned a lot. And good luck with the homework assignment that is associated with this video.